It's The Cube. Here is your host, Jeff Frick. Hi, Jeff Frick here. We are on the ground at SAP Silicon Valley Campus in Palo Alto, California, and we're out for a really special event tonight. It's the, I got to look, it's the Makers, Women Who Make America, Women in Business, which is a series put out by Makers, a documentary series. Uh, they're showing it on KQED, and as part of that program, they came here to SAP to promote the, the series, promote diversity, promote women in business. And we're joined here by our SAP host, right, Jenny Dearborn, SVP and Chief Learning Officer. Welcome. Great. Thank you, glad to be here. So great event, you had probably 200 people that yeah. were out for the panel, we watched the movie together and then we had a panel with four or five people so we'd be happy to take a few minutes, get with the panel and, and really dig in a little bit deeper. Great. So Art. first off, what is a chief learning officer? We, we do a thousand uh, executives last year, I don't know that we had a chief learning officer. Uh, chief learning officer means I'm responsible for all internal employee training, development, enablement, talent development, all the internal education that helps employees sort of be ready for the future, for the jobs of the future. Now that world is changing quite a bit, right? Because now nobody wants to read anything, they don't want to take a class, right? It's just supposed to be automatic. So it's your world dynamic. must be changing. Yeah, it's very dynamic. There's a lot of mobile and social learning and all new ways of training and educating employees. That's right. And big things happening with SAP, the big announcement the other day. So yeah. exciting times. I know, it's a great time to be at <laughs> SAP. So let's dig into some of your comments. I think that okay. really that really had jumped out at me. The first one was you talked about work-life integration, really, and, and I think the, the context was people talking about work-life balance, and you said there is no work-life balance, and I totally agree with yeah, you. Yeah, so work-life balance is sort of a crock. I mean, you it, it's just not possible. What you can do is integrate all the pieces of your life and try to be sane at the end of the day and get everything done. So, you know, for me personally, I get up early, I do conference calls and emails in the morning, I always block off 7 to 8 a.m. That's holy and sacred to get my kids up and out the door. I come into the office, I do work here, I go home, so when my kids come home from school, put dinner on the table, and then I'm back online. You know, everything just needs to be integrated. You can get it all done and, you know, and be a Wonder Woman at the end of the day, but if you think that you're going to have balance and feel good about every little thing that you're doing, that's just not possible. What about just kind of the, the continuing encroachment? I mean, can we get it all done or do we just have to do a better job of prioritizing? It's prioritization, it's outsourcing, it's knowing what to let go and just say, I don't need to have a perfectly clean house. It's okay, that, you know, a dirty kid is a happy kid. You know, I don't have to have everything spotless and organized in my life. I need to focus on what's truly important, what truly matters and, and kind of let a lot of the little stuff go. That, that, I think that's a great concept. There's a lot of little stuff that people don't let go that they can let go and focus on the big stuff, clean up some room for the big stuff. Yeah, exactly. The other piece you talked about, uh, there's some conversation about mentorship and you know, uh, male mentors, female mentors, people above you, below you, but you, what I thought that you talked about was unique is when this is the big jumps, right? It's one thing when you're getting started and you've got to kind of fit in and if everybody's having a drink, you probably got to have a drink and all these kind of things that when you're getting started working your way up, but you talked about the big jumps and those come every now and then. What's the magic to the big jumps? What what opportunities, who gave you those opportunities to make those big jumps? So it's, I think it's really being prepared for those opportunities when they come. So it's working really hard all the time <clears throat> and never thinking, that, you know, I have to push and push myself out there. You, you just, you're always focused and working really hard and then be prepared for when somebody's gonna come and tap you on the shoulder. And that's happened to me, I've been lucky enough, that's happened a couple times in my career where somebody, you know, I had a, a mentor that came to me and said, you're ready for this really big job. I said, I'm scared to death, I can't do that. But it's gonna be good for you, it'll push you, you have to take this. And, and so then I went and applied for that job and then I ended up getting that job. So no one handed me a job, but they pushed me into going and applying and that was great <clears throat> and a lot of times the big jumps financially comes when you move companies too um, you stay with a company for a while and you'll get a three percent five percent but those big double digit salary you know advances sometimes come when you leave companies and so you have to be comfortable sort of putting getting yourself out of your comfort zone right. and you know making a big switch in order to get those big financial jumps too and that was another thing you, you talked about is that if you're in a place and it's just not working 
you know, you just got to go. go. Just go. I mean, if you are working really hard and doing amazing work and you're not getting recognized and you don't get the sponsorship and you don't get the mentorship and you've tried for a couple promotions or laterals or something and it's not happening for you, why are you staying? I mean, you're torturing yourself, right? Go someplace where you can find your bliss, where people will honor you and recognize your talent. You know, you got to you got to take that risk and put yourself out there and you got to you got to go. Yeah. You had another interesting concept. You said you tell people, imagine people are always watching you, which which I find interesting. I, I do a lot of youth coaching, and I try to tell that to the kids that even if the drill's not happening at practice, imagine the coaches are watching you. They're watching how you move. They're watching how you perform. They're watching how you what your attitude is, and 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 you gotta always be ready because you just don't know who's you looking know around the, the corner. Ball's coming, right? Exactly. That's great. Exactly. So I, as a, a senior female executive, there. Are, you know, it's rare, we are rare. I mean, well, let's admit it, Rachel said that tonight, you know, that in Silicon Valley, female executives are rare. And so when you do come into the office, and you know, I travel about 50% of the time, but when I am here, I know that people are watching me. And so I need to make sure that I am, you know, always ready to go and, and have any conversation as someone approaches me in the hallway and they want to grab me for five minutes or things like that. I need to have my game face on and be ready because you, like you said, you never know when the ball's coming your way. You never know when the coaches are watching you or, you know, the employees in the corporate cafeteria. You just right. have to be, you have to know that people are, have their eyes on you. Right. So last question, we're getting the hook. Uh, an event like this, why is SAB doing this? You know, what does this tell you about the culture? Is this relatively new? Give us a little bit of background as why, you know, you guys set aside food, catering, 200 people, a really nice event. Yeah. Um, that's not an SAP event. Um, it's not an SAP event. We're very honored to host it on behalf of KQED. Um, SAP is an innovation company, and so this is very much in the heart and soul of what SAP is. And in order to innovate, you need to have diversity. And in order for diversity, you need to encourage events like this. Women, <clears throat> if they don't see a woman in an executive level role, they don't think that they can do it themselves. So you have to put your role models out there and make them very visible for others to see as they're coming up in the ranks. And you know, diversity makes us better, it makes better products, it makes us better customer focused organization. And diversity and, and um, innovation go hand in hand and innovation is what SAP is about. Excellent. Well, Jenny, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for spending a few extra minutes. It's, we've been here yeah. for a couple hours. Great, uh, great event, um, and we're really happy to, to take part in it. So you're watching theCUBE. I'm Jeff Frick. We're on the ground in Palo Alto at SAP Silicon Valley headquarters. Thanks for watching.